We will present a series of patients before we show our technique. Our inclusion criteria are severe lumbalgia on degenerative disc disease for more than one year, with or without discal hernia, without response to all medical treatments or failure of discal surgery, mini-invasive or classical. And we excluded patients presenting a frank motor deficit. Since the end of 2004, we operated on 35 patients using this technique. Mean 55.6 years old, 34 to 90 years, 13 men and 22 women. 40 operated levels, 2 L1, L2, 5 L2, L3, 7 L3, L4, 19 L4, L5, 7 L5, S1. 27 patients received cages without associated plates and eight patients received Europa cages and WSH plates. Here you see a 34-year-old patient who was operated on four times. The last procedure used endoscopy and local anesthesia and was followed by removal of the left sciatica on L5 left. The remaining lumbalgia had to be treated. Its etiology is perhaps this remaining bulging, but above all the lowering of the disc height and a small instability which we will see on the dynamical lateral x-ray. At first standing in extension where we see the retrolysthesis and on the x-ray made in flexion we see a large posterior opening of the disc which confirms this instability. Here you see the skin marks that we make on the patient on a radiolucent operating table with the C-arm and a metallic wire. We draw the middle line, the entry points of the cages at 7, 8, 9 centimeters of the middle line. We will choose at the last moment the best point and the entry point of the pedicular screws. Here is the cage that we will put in seen on its large side and on its small side, which is 2 millimeters smaller than the big side. The cage will be pushed in on its small side and we will turn it at 90 degrees on its slant axis so that we increase the height by 2 millimeters. Here you see the cage on its cage holder. Here is the guide wire on the left and the dilators on the right which will allow to increase the disc height before you put the cage in. The patient is lying prone in the OP room. We begin by a local anesthesia on the skin. We push the wire in until it reaches the disc and then I pass the dilators. Always controlling on the C-arm screen. Here the disc is soft enough to be penetrated directly with the dilator which would increase the intersomatic space as we see here on the screen. It will be necessary to be helped by a tube pusher because here the disc penetration is somewhat difficult. Here the lateral view shows well the increase of the space. Here is a trephine which will take out the discal substance. We remove the rest with the discal forceps. We then pass a curette to clean up the superior and inferior end plates and to make a bone surface which would allow a good fusion. The last trephine is passed and will complete of the bone. Here is the cage filled with bone substitute, its small side and its large side. It is threaded through the cage progressively and pushed in with a gentle hammer. The cage is then turned at 90 degrees. Here is a good restoration of the intersomatic space. The cage is in a good position in this lateral view. Then we cast off the cage holder.
Here is the second cage which is put in on the other side. And the stitches are particularly simple. Here is the patient smiling at the end of the operation. The pain has disappeared during the operation. Here is the CT scan in an axial view. The pedicular screws are well positioned. The axial view on the cage is level in a stable positioning. The intervertebral space before the operation and then after the operation where we see a good restoration of the intervertebral space, the lordosis is satisfying. This coronal view shows the well-positioned plate. The same for pedicular aiming. The patient stood up in the evening of the operation. Here we see him in a frontal view after two days, in a posterior view, and here squatting in a side view and in a frontal view.